Let's talk about the coefficient of restitution. The coefficient of restitution is represented by the symbol E and it's equal to the ratio of the difference of the final velocities after the collision to the initial velocities before the collision. So it's equal to V1 prime minus V2 prime divided by V2 minus V1. Now the coefficient of restitution, it's a number between zero and one. When the coefficient of restitution equals one, you're dealing with a perfectly elastic collision. Now for all collisions, momentum is conserved. But for an elastic collision, the kinetic energy is conserved. So there's no loss of kinetic energy for these types of collisions. When the coefficient of restitution is equal to zero, you have what is known as a completely inelastic collision. For all types of collisions, momentum is conserved. For an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved. Now, if the coefficient of restitution is between zero and one, you just have a regular inelastic collision. So that's what the coefficient of restitution will tell you. It will tell you if the collision is elastic or if it's inelastic and to what degree is it inelastic. Is it completely inelastic or partially inelastic? So now let's work on some practice problems. Let's start with this one. A five kilogram block moving east at eight meters per second strikes a 10 kilogram block at rest. So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the five kilogram block and it's moving east at eight meters per second. And it's going to strike a 10 kilogram block and that block is at rest. Now, after the collision, these two blocks, they will be sticking together. And in part A, we need to find a combined final velocity of the two blocks. So the initial momentum, that is the total momentum before the collision, is gonna be M1V1 plus M2V2. And that's gonna equal the final momentum, which is gonna be the sum of the two masses multiplied by their common final velocity. Now, M1 is five kilograms, V1 is eight, M2 is 10, V2 is zero. Now, M1 plus M2, five plus 10 is 15, and we could solve for V final. So five times eight is 40, and that's equal to 15 VF. So V final is gonna be 40 divided by 15. That's eight over three, which you could round that to 2.67 meters per second. So that's the answer for part A. Now, part B, calculate the coefficient of restitution. So that's gonna be V1 prime minus V2 prime over V2 minus V1. So V1 prime and V2 prime, the final velocities of the two blocks, because they're sticking together, they're moving at the same speed. So V1 prime and V2 prime, they're both equal to 2.67. Now V2 was at rest, so that was zero. V1 was eight. So because the two blocks are sticking together and they're moving at the same speed, the coefficient of restitution will be zero because these two, they will cancel out. So what this tells us is that we're dealing with a completely inelastic collision. So you're always gonna have that situation whenever the two blocks stick together. Number two, an eight kilogram block moving east at six meters per second strikes a four kilogram block moving east at two meters per second. 
After the collision, the 8 kilogram block continues to move east at 4 meters per second. What is the final velocity of the 4 kilogram block after the collision? So here is the 8 kilogram block and it's moving east at 6 meters per second. And here we have another block, it's a 4 kilogram block, but this one is moving east at 2 meters per second. Now after the collision, the 8 kilogram block is moving east but at a lower speed, at 4 meters per second, so it lost some energy. We need to find the final velocity of the 4 kilogram block, and then we can move on to part B. So this is V1, this is V2, this is V1 prime, we need to find V2 prime. So we have M1 V1 plus M2 V2, that's going to equal M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. So M1 is 8, V1 is 6. M2 is 4, V2 is 2. M1 is 8, V1 prime is 4. M2 is 4, and let's solve for V2 prime. So 8 times 6 is 48, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32. And then 8 plus 48, that's going to be 56. 56 minus 32 is 24. And dividing both sides by 4, we have 24 over 4, which gives us 6 meters per second. So that's the final velocity of the 4 kilogram block after the collision. Notice that these two blocks, they are not sticking together. So because they have, because after the collision, because they have different speeds and they're not sticking together, this will not be a completely inelastic collision, but it will simply be just an inelastic collision. So let's calculate the coefficient of restitution. So it's going to be V1 prime minus V2 prime over V2 minus V1. So V1 prime is 4, V2 prime is 6, V2 is 2, and V1 is 6. So 4 minus 6 is negative 2, 2 minus 6 is negative 4, the negatives cancel, 2 over 4 is 0.5. So this is a value between 0 and 1, so that tells us that the collision is simply an inelastic collision. It's not an elastic collision, nor is it a completely inelastic collision, it's simply an inelastic collision. Now we can see if we have an inelastic collision by checking if the kinetic energy has been conserved or not. For an inelastic collision, the kinetic energy is not conserved. So the kinetic energy is going to be 1 half mv squared. So for the first one, it's going to be 1 half 8 times 6 squared. Half of 8 is 4, so 4 times 6 squared, that's 144 joules. Now for the second one, it's going to be 1 half times 4 times 2 squared. Half of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 squared, that's 2 times 4, which is 8. For the next one, it's 1 half times 8 times 4 squared. So that's going to be 64 joules. And for the last one, Half of 4 is 2, 6 squared is 36, 2 times 36 is 72. So if we calculate the total before the collision, it's 144 plus 8, which is 152 joules. And after the collision, it's 64 plus 72, which is 136 joules. So we could see that we have a loss of negative 16 joules of kinetic energy. 
So because there was a loss of kinetic energy, we know that we're dealing with an inelastic collision. Now, if you were to follow the same procedure for the last problem, the loss in kinetic energy is about 53.5 joules when the coefficient of restitution is zero. For this problem, there was only negative 16 joules of energy loss and the coefficient of restitution is 0.5. And when it's one, we know that we're gonna have a perfectly elastic collision. There will be no loss of kinetic energy. So generally speaking, based on the examples that we've seen in this video, as the coefficient of restitution increases from zero to one, the loss of kinetic energy goes down. As E goes up to one, the loss of kinetic energy goes down to zero. Now let's work on this problem. So we have a four kilogram ball and it's moving east at five meters per second and it strikes a two kilogram ball, which is at rest. Now the four kilogram ball after the collision, it's gonna move east at 1.67 meters per second and a two kilogram ball is going to move east at a higher speed at 6.67 meters per second. Calculate the coefficient of restitution. So it's gonna be V1 prime minus V2 prime over V2 minus V1. So this is V1, V2 is zero, this is V1 prime, and this is V2 prime. So V1 prime in this problem is 1.67. V2 prime is 6.67. V2, the two kilogram balls at rest, so that's zero. And V1, that's gonna be five. So 1.67 minus 6.67, that's negative five. Zero minus five is negative five, which is one. So because the coefficient of restitution is one, what we have here is a perfectly elastic collision. So because we have an elastic collision, we know that the kinetic energy is going to be conserved. So there's no loss in kinetic energy. And we can go ahead and determine that in this problem. So if we calculate the kinetic energy for the first ball, it's going to be 1 half times 4 times 5 squared. Half of four is two, five squared is 25. Two times 25 is 50. Now for the second ball, it's not moving, it's at rest, so it has no kinetic energy. So on the left, we have 50 joules of kinetic energy. On the right, this is gonna be one half times four times 1.67 squared. And that's going to be about 5.578 joules. For the second one, it's 1 half times 2 times 6.67 squared. So that's just 6.67 squared. And that's going to be 44.489 joules. So if we add those two numbers together, we get about 50.067 joules. Now, of course, these are rounded figures. So if we were to use exact answers, we would get 50 joules. So for all practical purposes, the change in kinetic energy is virtually zero. So what we have here is an elastic collision. And we can see that the coefficient of restitution is indeed one when you have an elastic collision.